Hey you guys, this is Little Pug Games, and welcome to today's episode. Today is the first part of a new series, and the series is on how to create your own procedurally generated maps, like the one you see up here. So if I click it again, we'll see a completely different map. And we're going to do this using the drunk walker method. And if you don't know about it, I went over it a little bit in my last video. So definitely take a look. And it's going to be pretty easy to implement this. It's going to be four scripts. We're going to have a drunk walker. And the drunk walker will simply take care of keeping track of its position and moving. And then we'll have a drunk walker manager. And the manager kind of keeps track of all the drunk walkers as they move about. Um, and finally, we have the level creator. So the level creator is in charge of getting whatever the drunk walker manager returns to it, namely the tile set positions, and then drawing it up on Unity's tile map to create what you see up here. So we're going to learn two big things. One is we're going to learn about how to actually implement the drunk walker uh, algorithm and then two, how to use Unity's tile map to create that map onto and place it onto Unity. So today we're going to create three of those scripts and in the next episode, in the next episode, we'll go over how to actually get those tile map positions and use Unity's tile map to create this level that you see out here. So without further ado, let's let's start you guys. So we're going to do this in Dungeon Creation Tut and I pre-made the classes. So Drunk Walker, Drunk Walker Manager and the level creation data. So let's head over to Visual Studios and go over these really quick. So we're going to start with level creation data and I'm doing this in a little different way, so I created these classes beforehand and I'm just going to explain the code as we go along the class. So first things first is level creation data. You want it to be an asset. Uh, so when you right click on Unity, you can see a little create button and we'll be able to use that create button to create this level creation data. And it's going to have two simple things for now the number of walkers and the number of iterations. So if in your game you have different levels that use different number of walkers, different number of iterations, this will be able to take care of that. So with that, this class is done basically. We'll add to it more in the next episode, but this is what we need for now. Next we'll go to the drunk walker. Let's go to drunk walker really quick and go over what we need here. So we're going to create a property called position and the drunk walker needs to keep track of its own position. So property, it's a vector to integer and that's it. We're going to, so one other thing to notice is this is not a mono behavior, it's just a class. So in the start method, we're just going to set it to some position that we give it. Probably zero, vector to int zero. And then we're going to create a move func a method. So it's not filled in yet because we need to go to the junk walk manager to junk walker manager to create some of these things like direction. Let's go to the junk walker manager really quickly and start with this. So first things first is we need to set some kind of directions for the junk walkers to move in. In our case, it's going to be north, east, south, and west. So in your game, it might be different. So change this according to what you want to do. You might add more directions like northeast, north, or northwest, etc., etc. So that's where we need direction. The next thing you want to do is create a dictionary that maps direction to a movement type. So if you see up here, in direction north, we set it to a vector, uh, vector two up. And if you notice, it's vector two and zero one. So 
x0, 1, and a y of 1, so up. And, oh, stop. Whoops, caught a little mistake. Uh, this is supposed to be down. I'll change it right now. But, yeah, so direction south would be vector 2 int down. So I'll change that right now. Let me go over the whole class first. All right, so the next thing we want to do is create a method called create map. This will take the level creation data that we just created, and it'll start to create a map. So we'll initialize a couple of values first. We need to know the number of drunk walkers that we're going to create. And we get that in level data. And we also need to keep track of the positions we visited. So each drunk walker will move on its own. So this manager will keep track of those positions. The next thing we want to do is basically fill in our drunk walker list. So let's say in our level creation data, we had number of walkers equal to three. So we're just going to fill that list in with three walkers. And we're going to start each of them off with a position of zero. Next, we're going to iterate over the number of iterations that we have in our level data. So if you think about it, let's say we have 60 iterations. Each drunk walker is going to move 60 times randomly. And this is what the inner for loop is. So for each drunk walker in the list of walkers, we're going to allow that drunk walker to move one spot. And it's going to repeat until the number of iterations is complete. So vector 2 int, the new position is going to be drunk walker move. And we're going to pass this a dictionary. So specifically this one that we created up here the direction to movement mapping. And we're just going to add, so this is the important part too, is positions visited, we're going to add to it the position that that specific drunk walker moved to, because in doing so, we can keep track of all those positions that the drunk walker has been to. And in the next episode, when we pass this to the level creator, it'll just get all those positions and place it on the tile map. And, and let me just change this to down, and we're good to go. So let's go back quickly to the drunk walker, and this is simple. So remember, we took that mapping from that direction to movement mapping. We're going to randomly choose one of those directions. So remember, this is a drunk walker, so he doesn't know where he's going. He's just going to choose a random direction and move there. So 0 to whatever the count of this dictionary. So in this, in this example, it's 4. North, south, east, and west. So it's going to choose a direction to move towards. And then it's simply going to move there. So position plus equals the direction to movement mapping and you return the position once you've moved there. So once you return the position, if you see here, we'll just add it to the hash set and we're good to go. So this is the first part of this series. And here's a question for you guys. So I didn't implement this in this specific implementation, but what if I didn't want any overlap? So let's say two junk walkers meet up on the same position. How can we get rid of that? So that code, I would assume, might go somewhere in here. So think about that. That's an interesting question. We could have something in our level creation data, like public bool overlap allowed. So if it's false, if it's not, if we do not allow overlap, how can we implement that in our drunk walker manager? So that's an interesting question to think about. And here's another question for you guys is what if we wanted to make some kind of tunnel in our game? And for example, 
we could add a bias to east or west, right? So if we go to our drunk walker, what if we gave east and west some kind of bias? So 40% to the west, 40% to the east, and we only give north and south 10% a chance of getting selected. How can we do that? So these types of questions, and if you end up impl implementing them, they'll make for pretty cool map creation. So thank you for watching. And this is just the first part. In the next episode, we'll go over how to create the level creator. So the level creator is this guy up here. And we'll feed it what we created today, as well as a tile map and a rule tile. And we'll basically, it'll basically be able to create something like this. It'll place the map that we create onto a tile map. And if we restart it again, a procedurally generated map is what is created. So, awesome. I also posted the code up on GitHub so you guys can mess around with it, add it to your own projects. And, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.